Every company has a director, but I guess when you're quite intentional about the role of the directors, you start to look at, well, what does the business need in the future? And who could we, should we put around the table to start having that discussion? And it's a very separate discussion from the day to day. Uh, so, you know, you're looking at different horizons and there's a level of holding the management team to account actually delivering what the business is setting out to do. Why should a company have governance? It's a key part when, when we come across businesses, you know, in the medium space, they generally have some form of governance. Often it needs more structure in terms of perhaps some independence and the value of having an independent sounding board independent people who aren't in the day-to-day, -day, so they actually can't get too involved. It shifts the conversation. And then there's the, the piece around how do they quite intentionally have a discussion in that space that's not operational, that has a separate agenda, that has some separate KPIs. So I think the value of having a board or having good governance or even advisory board which is moving towards perhaps independent governance allows businesses to execute succession. So I guess if a business has, a, they all have founders, but if it's based on a founder or it's based on a clever business owner, then the challenge is how do they get out of the business? And so a part of that equation, which makes it inherently easier, is to have those deliberate discussions, but it allows them not to work day to day in the business, for example, but to still have oversight in terms of governing the business. I think there are some significant patterns that are happening in the governance space. So we all know that there's a higher level of scrutiny, expectation, accountability being placed on directors of businesses, whether that's independent directors or directors working in the business, executive directors. And we're seeing some pretty interesting case studies around that. Companies that have traded insolvently, companies that have perhaps made the wrong choice without considering the wider picture. So that's a, a pattern. Some of the things that we're seeing is we come across boards that are not as effective as they could be. They've got long-term directors. They haven't got good professional development around the directors. They aren't having the conversation, who do we need around the board table based on the future success and the future strategy of the business. There's too much focus on compliance. So it's important, it's absolutely critical, but there's the end piece around the strategy and, and what should and what could the company be doing is often missing. So it's too operational. So very much agendas outdated. They focus on the CE's report only. That's important for holding to account, but there's no real strategic discussions or certainly not as much time and focus put into that future discussion. I think there's some key patterns around the future of directorship. So the, the days where directors hold many, many directorships. It's just too challenging and dynamic now. There's too much accountability that directors can't stay across it. So there's a real pattern of doing less and doing more meaningful directorships that play to your strengths. There's another pattern around, it used to be the realm of the retired professional. As I come out of an executive role or the day to day, I'm going to do a few directorships. The reality is that you need to have a foothold in commerce it's moving too fast for you to be totally retired and still add value at the directorship level. So that, that would sort of lead you to those that are future focused, that have ongoing professional development, that have some form of executive experience where they get to see what's happening in the market and understand the challenges that executives have.